for a long time, but you just can't seem to see the fruit of what you've been doing, you're going to get some answers this morning, glory to God. And I want you to get yourself in a position and begin. Matter of fact, does everybody have a pen or pencil and something to write on? Because whenever you come in here, it is necessary that you take copious notes so that you can refer back to those notes in your own private studies. Amen? Well, last Sunday, I had the awesome privilege of teaching a message that was entitled, You Can't Deserve God's Favor. And in that teaching, I began to explain how the favor of God that we are underneath then wherein we stand right now is the favor of God is the divine favor that has been predestined before the foundations of this earth amen I want you to understand that if it was predestined before the foundations of this earth and you were not physically there to do anything for the favor I don't want you to be confused into thinking that you can do anything to deserve more of the favor today amen I want you to understand something because a lot of times people get the word predestined um, confused. They think that just because it is predestined that it is anchored in stone. That's a bit of truth but not the whole truth because I want you to know that it was his intention that was predestined. Just like salvation was, in, uh, was predestined for the whole world to receive but not everybody's going to receive it. Are you listening to me? But I want you to know beyond a shadow of a doubt, although the unmerited, the unearned, and undeserved favor of God was predestined before the foundations of this earth, I want you to know that there is a way for every single born-again believer to gain access to the favor of God. I'm here to tell you this morning that God has turned on the faucet, glory to God. You can accidentally bump in the favor in the dispensation in which you live. You're going to find favor in the bank. You'll find favor in the store. You'll find favor in the clothing store. Everywhere you go, glory to God, the favor of God is available to you. But if you don't understand the dispensation in which you live, I'm here to tell you, you won't be able to appropriate the grace of God. You won't be able to access the favor of God. Even though the grace of God is a dispensation in which we live, there is some things that needs to be done by the Spirit in order for you to gain access. Amen? In other words, in this new system, it's no longer the works of the flesh, but it is the works of faith. I'm going to say that one more time. It is no longer the works of the flesh, but it is the works of faith. You are under a new system. And it's important that we don't confuse the two systems. This was the old and this is the new. We have been born underneath the new system, but we try to go at the new system with an old mindset and it is causing a schism. It's causing things not to work like they're supposed to work. And the church and we're going to share some things with you this morning that's going to clear up all that extra stuff. Amen. You see, as a born-again believer, we can no longer take it lightly. We can no longer be passive to the reality of the fact that we are living in a dispensation <clears throat> that is intended for you to prosper. Y'all should have shouted. That was a good opportunity for y'all. Y'all should have shouted the roof off in this place. You are living in a dispensation right now that is intended for you to prosper. It is intended for you to excel. It is intended for you to succeed in life. Are you listening to me? And it is deliberate. It is intentional for it to happen. I want you to know that it is deliberately running concurrent with the sin that is um, running rampant in this earth realm. Why is that? Because if God's mindset is like this, you know once they come to the end of their sin, and once they see the fruit of their labor in sin, they'll begin to realize that the grace of God is still abounding. Are you listening to me? And as the grace of God is still abounding, they'll also begin to recognize, they'll come to the realization that their wealth has been transferred, that their health has been compromised, that their houses are divided, and they're definitely in last place. And the church said, are you listening to me? 
dispensation in which you live has been designated and intended for us to prosper, intended for us to excel. And he's like this, if you can't make it in this dispensation, dear God, are you listening to me? But we're going to discover why it is that we are not excelling and prospering in this dispensation. Amen. And now, when I show it to you, I don't want you to get mad. I don't want you to get upset and start throwing some ugly looks at me. No, I'm just telling you what thus said the word of God. Amen. Because when the truth, when it gets to the, uh, when, when, when you get to the bare essence of a thing, you've got to do a personal evaluation as to why it is not working. A lot of us have been in our time, in our prayer time, asking God the same question. Why, why, why? I'm getting ready to show you why, why, why. And once I show you the why, 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 you got to start doing the what, what, what. And the church said. Combine some, uh, some teachings to expose a major problem in the body of Christ and I want to share with you that God has designed a system a long time ago that is intended for every born-again believer to prosper. Amen? And I want you to understand the reason why we are not is because we really don't understand the system. Amen? All right. Now, I want you to turn with me, if you will, to the book of uh, uh, Genesis chapter 4, because in order to share this with you, I have to take you all the way back to the beginning as I revealed to you two separate mindsets that came into this earth realm. In the book of Genesis chapter 4, and just say amen when you're there. Amen. It reads like this in chapter 4, verse 1, it reads this way. And Adam knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel, and Abel was a keeper of the sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And verse 4, and Abel... He also brought of the firstling of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance failed. And evil. And I want you to know that after they partook of the fruit, they began to multiply. It was very important that the word of God said it specifically the way that it did when he originally told them to be fruitful and multiply because and is a conjunction word. He didn't say multiply and then be fruitful. He said to be fruitful and multiply. In other words, to be full of this good fruit that I have provided for you and then multiply because whatever fruit that you put on the inside of you will be multiplied unto whoever comes after you and the church said so they partook of the tree of knowledge of good and to end of evil and I want you to know that they began to multiply two different mindsets amen two different mindsets and I want you to understand that where you have two different mindsets, you have two different methodologies. You have two different ways of thinking. In other words, if the tree has a dual purpose, which is the knowledge of good and evil, I want you to know that it will cause a duality of nature. Cain had a different mindset than what Abel had. Cain had a mindset to where, you know, um, at least I'm giving something to God. But then Abel turned around and he had a reverence in his giving to where he began to give God his best. Are you listening to me? This was the beginning of two different mindsets, two different systems, two different methodologies. We know that Cain would represent a generation of people who possess that same old mentality. Amen? In other words, it was a sense of ownership that Cain had over his harvest 
that prevented him from giving God his best. Did y'all hear that? That's a mindset. That's a methodology. That's a mentality. Amen. That's a mentality that still exists today. Are you listening to me? In other words, it was God that caused him to prosper, that caused him to get the harvest, but he had what's called a sense of ownership over the harvest to the point to where he gave God what was left. Did you hear what I said? It still exists today. And I want you to know that if that is anyone's thinking in here that's from the old system and you're not realizing that you've been born again under a new system. And when you realize that you've been born again under a new system, then you will always put God first. You will always give him your best. And the church said, are you listening to me? 